hi, my name's Vince Sheehan and today I'd like to talk about Bartok's Concerto for Orchestra. And I'd like to go through each movement of this piece exploring how the music's put together because I do believe that if you have some understanding of musical form and structure it can greatly aid our enjoyment of classical music. That's why I do these videos. Now a bit of background, in 1940 Bartok left Hungary and emigrated to the United States with his wife. Uh, why did he do this? Well Bartok was always um, a critic of Nazism and, um, and indeed his own country Hungary under Miklos Horthy made an alliance with Hitler and Bartok felt it was time for him to leave really for his own safety. Now it was a difficult decision for Bartok because once he got to the States much of his income had gone. He made, uh, as well as being a composer, he was a, uh, an in-demand concert pianist and, uh, and teacher in Hungary. Uh, and also his health deteriorated. It wasn't long before Bartok actually died of leukemia once he'd moved to the States. Uh, and actually it was quite a low time for him um, but while he was in hospital Serge Kusevitsky visited him and gave him a commission uh, for the Boston Symphony Orchestra uh, which Bartok took up and it kind of reinvigorated him uh, to compose his last masterpieces. Um, and uh, the piece was premiered in December of 1944 at Carnegie Hall and since then it's become one of the real uh, 20th century staples of, uh, of orchestral music. Surely one of the, if not the most popular pieces of music Bartok ever wrote. Now the concerto for orchestra is uh, somewhat of a misleading title perhaps you know, you often hear people say, well, you know, it's about the different families of the orchestra, you know, being treated with, with these virtuosic lines and therefore it's a bit like a concerto in that respect. But, you know, I think it's basically more of a symphony, uh, maybe somewhere between a symphony and, and an orchestral suite. There were other people uh, writing concertos or orchestras around the mid-20th century as well. You might think of Hindemith or, um, or even Kodai, Bartok's countryman. Um, but those pieces are more neo-baroque in flavour, uh, perhaps at least structurally. Um, this really doesn't look to the Concerto Grosso as such. It's uh, more of a symphonic uh, argument. There's uh, indeed the two of the movements are in sonata form. And also there's some um, relationships between the movements, um, such as the first and third movements, uh, but also uh, in a more subtle way elsewhere in the piece. So the first movement is the introduzione, uh, the introduction. And this is a sonata form piece with a lengthy introduction. So the introduction has got an introduction, if you know what I mean. And um, right at the beginning of this work, we hear these fourths. Uh, these perfect fourths in the cellos and double basses. Um, and the, the interval of a fourth is actually very important in, in the work generally. Then we have tremolo violins. Flutes. Those three ideas are repeated in this introduction, I think it's four times, before we move into the main uh, argument of the, of the movement. When we hear this round the second time, there's more purpose with the music. Something seems to be coalescing here, there seems to be more direction.
tremolo strings again. This time the flute introduces um, a more distinct melody, which goes like this. Something like that. The next time round, the music flows a bit more. Uh, the bass and cello is now in quavers. The music seems to be building some momentum. We hear some quiet trumpets in harmony playing that flute melody. Before the violins come in, in an impassioned cry with that flute tune. And then the timpani come in, almost like this, with this almost like funeral march tread. And the music builds to this huge uh, fortissimo climax. We're now ready to begin with the first subject. Allegro Vivace, we hear this uh, melody. So that melody uh, dominates this first subject group. We have a slightly more relaxed tune as well. The music seems to break down into these fragments of that dotted idea. We then have another really important idea um, we first hear in the trombone. That's the melody that actually ends the movement. Without any transition, we come to a change in mood and a change in tempo. Uh, this is the second subject group, Tranquillo. This is all rather folky sounding, as you'd expect with Bartok. We have this drone accompaniment uh, with this uh, this oboe. That oboe tune also notice how uh, dun, 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 dun. the rhythm is uh, similar to this. So that dun, 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 is uh, present in both the first and second subjects. Um, helps give this piece, you know, that real kind of symphonic unity, even though it's a concerto rather than a symphony. There's some beautiful passages of. Um, um, descending strings uh, subdivided. Um, the orchestration in this work is, is, is absolutely fantastic, as you'd expect. The development begins with an explosion based on that first subject. Uh, listen out here, there's a stretto. Isn't that exciting, that dun 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 dun, kind of overlapping each other, and you know, really close to each other, just, it's just kind of breathlessly exciting. We then come um, into a gentler passage, again, tranquilo like the um, second subject. Um, and then we're into another really exciting passage in this development where we have more kind of counterpoint. We have um, a return of this. Um, 
and uh, that tune is just passed around uh, the brass, the whole brass section. Are just playing that, dum, dum, da, 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 you know, overlapping again. Um, really exciting. So it's really festive as well. Um, it's such a wonderful sound. Uh, we even hear the tune um, inverted. So instead of um, we hear um, it's like the other way around. Uh, really great stuff. We hear those uh, sweeps coming back, and we have this climax fortissimo, and then all of a sudden back to that folk-like second subject with the with the drones this time on the clarinets and then we have um, a brief uh, recapitulation of the first subject right in the closing bars of this movement uh, almost in a, like a coda I suppose but I think you could say this is the final return of the first subject and uh, we end the piece in a thrilling way on that trombone melody again <laughs> brings that, this wonderful movement uh, to a close. The second movement, the game of pairs, or the presentation of the couples, is a delightful movement. Um, if this piece is about putting a spotlight on different instruments of the orchestra, then perhaps this movement justifies that uh, more than the others. Um, we begin with this, this very distinctive drum rhythm. I love that. Um, and then two bassoons come in with this really um, odd tune. Um, they kind of sound like two angry ducks. You hear those that kind of the pizzicato strings coming in you know, quite often on the the offbeat, and then the oboes come in, um, elaborating on that tune. That kind of thing. Um, the music is quite slidey and kind of oily in a way, and kind of. Um, Full of rubato, kind of written in the score, very idiomatic of, uh, I suppose, Eastern European folk music. Eventually, we get to a contrasting section uh, where the trumpets um, again in harmony. We always hear these uh, instruments in pairs, sometimes threes as well, actually. But um, Bartok changes the interval every time a pair of instruments comes in. So the bassoons at the beginning were in sixths. Uh, when the trumpets come in with this new tune, they're actually major seconds of a dissonant sound. And you can hear those glissandi in the strings. Really uh, striking orchestration. We then have a third section, the C section. And by the way, the form for each of these movements are down below in the description with the bar numbers. Uh, this is like a chorale. And we hear the, the side drum in the background, that reminder from the very opening of the movement. We then have a return to the A section with the, what I call the Angry Duck tune. This time we have another bassoon added and listen out for that, it's kind of playing these, um, this wonderful uh, counter melody. Um, I really love that moment. 
uh, when the three bassoons come in there. We have uh, B again, those muted trumpets, and we have um, a very soft coda, and the music ends with that drum to two uh, finishes the piece how it began. The third movement, the elegy, is um, a great example of Bartok's night music. Uh, many of his works, um, he had this, this, this wonderfully evocative evocations of, of dusk and the night time, uh, and this is one of them. It's actually a very, um, very a kind of dark and um, powerful piece, this one, um, and it draws on melodies we've heard already from the first movement. As the first movement, the introduction of the first movement began with those, those perfect fourths in the basses, uh, this time we have, uh, we have it going down like this. And then the strings creep in with this, uh, this sinuous creeping line. flutters in the woodwinds. Um, very unique sound world. We have a passage that <laughs> I think um, sounds a bit like E.T. as well. <laughs> uh, by John, I'm sure John Williams um, drew a lot from this piece when he wrote that score. And then we have this eruption of a feeling when we hit the B section where we have a return to this idea from the, from the first movement. music of tragedy and um, in a sense of collapse, the dark heart of this work. We then have another section, a C section, which is rather ghostly in its effect. A hint of that theme from the, the introduction to the first movement there as well. We have a return to the B section with those quotes from the first movement and then uh, the movement finishes with the nighttime music of the A section uh, before we go into a coda. The fourth movement, the intermezzo interrotto, consists really of two tunes. It's very folk-like. And we have this melody which seems to uh, keep changing meter. Actually changing meter is characteristic of all the sections in this, this movement. On the oboe. And that tune is passed around uh, the orchestra. Um, very difficult to tap where the pulse lies. And then we have this, uh, this really beautiful stirring melody, which um, again keeps changing meter. It's really lovely. Something like this. like a kind of a green sleeves kind of tune. Um, we have a return to that first tune uh, and then we have this uh, contrasting section, a C section, which seems to be a bit of a kind of a roast I suppose of um, Shostakovich's Seventh Symphony, you know the famous bit with the repeated um, tune in that work. It sounds like Bartok wasn't a fan of this. Um, so we hear that tune, dum dum Da -dum, dum, 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 da -dum, dum. If you know that, that Shostakovich symphony. But here it's like this. And uh, listen out for the, um, the outrageous uh, trombone glissandi. 
Bartok really is taking the mick here. Savage. <laughs> we then have a repeat of um, the B section, that beautiful melody, before we have a coda. The finale is an exhilarating movement um, and really ends this concerto for orchestra with uh, panache and virtuosity. It's in sonata form, like the first movement, and we begin with this call to attention. And then we're into the first subject group, which is wild uh, in a folky frenzy. The violas and uh, and celli have something like this, this kind of a guitar-like pizzicato. And over the top we have this rush of semi-quavers um, coming in uh, one at a time um, with the um, first and second violins subdivided. That kind of thing, really quick, you know. And then eventually, this uh, these semiquavers bubble up to the surface uh, like a boiling pan of water, and uh, we reach this motif uh, forte. Then we have this other idea, which we hear in the winds. The energy doesn't let up in this movement. Eventually we come to a transition and the transition is heralded by that initial idea we heard right at the very beginning of the movement. Uh, this time we hear it in the bassoons. That idea is kind of piled on top of each other in a stretto, uh, in this, this contrapuntal way. Um, and then we have these this more calming music, tranquilo, on, in the woodwinds. We hear these beautiful meandering uh, chromatic movements in the, uh, in the strings in this transition as well, rather ghostly. And that takes us to the second subject. And there's a couple of ideas in the second subject group. We hear this kind of folky, almost Dvorak-like tune um, in the oboes. And uh, then the orchestra comes in. It, uh, this bit always, to me, sounds like the Wild West. <laughs> Something out of a, you know, a Western film. Um, and in the midst of this kind of expanse of uh, of the wild west we hear this uh this great tune on the trumpet i love this um, that tune's turned on its head as well it's inverted <laughs> And then we go into the development, and the development is just purely based on that tune we just heard. We hear these uh, these ghostly harmonics in the, the violins. That kind of thing. And then we hear that tune, first of all in the second violins. And it's just got this real folky... Uh, coarse quality to it you know we've got like plenty of um portamento in the, the violin writing the kind of slides between the notes they're kind of 
full of those. I love that. Um, you know, so Bartok, isn't it? Bartok really understood the expressive capabilities of string instruments, you know, not just the notes, but what goes on between the notes too. That tune's inverted, it's treated contrapuntally. It's just such a fantastic development, this. And we even have um, hints of the second movement, I think, in this as well, the dancer couples. If you listen carefully, some of the rhythms remind us of that. Um, if you remember that beat. So listen out for that. Sure enough, um, we go back to the first subject for the recapitulation. so full of energy we get to that uh, tune again da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. we have that transition again um, this time concentrating on its beautiful string chords and then um, because we've dealt on that tune so much Because we've heard that so much in the development, Bartok skips it in the recapitulation and we go straight into this, um, this, this wonderful coda. Again, there's hints of the second movement, but the theme, that, that main theme from uh, which I just played from the second subject group just dominates, but in a more kind of magisterial and, and triumphant brassy way now. Um, we are truly reaching the apotheosis of this music. There's two endings to this concerto. Most people just play Bartok's revised ending, which is the best version. So thanks for watching, um, go and listen to this great piece again and um, if this is your kind of thing and uh, you've liked this video please click like and please subscribe to my channel. If there's a piece you want me to look at in the future please put it in the comments below. See you soon, thank you, bye.